Hello students, in today's lecture, I will talk you about fertilization. Now, whenever we will talk about the development in the first week of the life, what will happen as soon as there is a ejaculation occur, the sperm is going to meet with the secondary oocyte. And we know that the secondary oocyte and sperm meet into the ampullary part of the fallopian tube. And that process is known as fertilization. So, in the first seven days, there are three things which is always there and you have the questions on them. The first is fertilization, second is known as cleavage. Now, cleavage is a process of mitotic activities and the third and the last step is implantation. That means, when there is a first seven day life if you are talking about from the uh, fertilization, the fertilization is on the first day and the first week end with the implantation in the uterine cavity. So, let us discuss about the fertilization, how to write in your university exam. So, my dear students, the always we require two gametes for the fertilization, female gamete which is in the form of secondary oocyte and we need a male gamete that is known as spermatozoa. Now, these both gametes meet into the fallopian tube and before meeting, you need the priming of these two gametes. So, when we are talking about the fertilization, the first thing comes is definition of fertilization. So, the definition of fertilization means when there is a fusion of male and female gametes and these gametes when they will fuse, you are having a product and that product is known as zygote. And here if you will see, you will realize that the sperm and the oocyte both are haploid in nature. And when we are talking about the zygote, it is diploid in nature. So, what is the definition of the fertilization? Fertilization is a process of the fusion of the male and female gamete to form a zygote. And by the process of fertilization, the two haploid cells fuses to form a diploid cell. Clear? So, where the fertilization take place? Fertilization take place in the ampulla of fallopian tube. So, <coughs> as I told you, the there is a prerequisite is always there for the male gamete to become or to achieve the capability to fertilize a ovum. What does it mean? That suppose if you are having a collection of the freshly ejaculated semen outside the female body, what I am saying? Outside the female body, if you are collecting the some semen into a vessel, now the sperms which are present into this semen are right now not having the capability to fertilize the ova. Why? Because these sperm has to go under the priming. The process is known as priming. And that priming can be take place by two ways. Either you will place these spermatozoa inside the female genital tract or you may do artificially inside the lab with the help of some enzymes. So, my dear students, these spermatozoa has to go under some priming and that priming is the prerequisite and after that the spermatozoa will get or will achieve the capability to fertilize the ova. So, what is that prerequisite? The first process is known as capacitation. What is that? Capacitation. Now, in the capacitation, we are doing a process that is known as conditioning. That is known as conditioning of your spermatozoa. And the conditioning is also known as maturation of spermatozoa. So, by the conditioning or maturation of spermatozoa, 
the spermatozoa is going to achieve the ability to fertilize. Now, C for capacitation, C for conditioning and this conditioning will take place in the female genital tract when there is a contact of the sperm with the female mucosa. And female mucosa produces some enzymes and those enzymes will change the property of the head of the sperm. And what are these th two things? Those will change. There are two things which change that is known as the conditioning. First thing is known as there is a removal of glycoprotein coat. There is a removal of glycoprotein coat from the head of the sperm. And second thing is there is a removal of semen plasma protein. So, these two things has to remove from the head of the sperm to make or to allow or to mature the spermatozoa. So, my dear students, whenever you are reading or whenever you are writing the fertilization in your exam, this is my sincere suggestion that always write the capacitation in the bold letters because it is a very important prerequisite which causes priming or maturation of the spermatozoa. And it is defined as a C for capacitation, C for conditioning. So, capacitation defined as a conditioning of the spermatozoa and in this process, when the spermatozoa passing through the female genital tract and there is a contact of female mucosa, the female mucosa releases the enzymes which will remove the glycoprotein coat and the seminal plasma proteins from the head of the sperm. Clear? So, this is the first process which is known as capacitation. Now, there is a second prerequisite is known as acrosomal reaction. <coughs> acrosomal reaction. Now, what is the acrosomal reaction? Now, acrosomal reaction means that the head of the sperm start to release the enzymes. Now, what these enzymes? These are hyaluronidase and acrosine. These enzymes released from the head of a sperm once they will contact the secondary oocyte. So, my dear students, these two things capacitation and the acrosomal reaction are compulsory or you can say the prerequisite for a spermatozoa to penetrate the different barriers of secondary oocyte and to fertilize it. Clear? So, when we are starting the writing in the exam, first we will define the fertilization then we will define the process of priming, where you have to detail about the capacitation and acrosomal reaction. Now, we will move to the steps of fertilization. So, my dear students, what will happen that when we are talking about the female genital tract, now suppose this is your female genital tract, here is your fallopian tube. Now, the spermatozoa is entering till this ampulla. Now, in this ampulla, what will happen? The secondary oocyte, which has been released from the ovary by ovulation, also approach at this point. Now, in this ampullary region, both the male and female gametes meet. So, for the fertilization, what will happen? This male gamete pierces the barriers of the female gamete. So, what are the barriers has been pierced by the male gamete? So, for that you should have an idea about the structure of secondary oocyte. So, when you will see the secondary oocyte, there is a outermost layer and this outermost layer is known as corona radiata, where you will have two or three layer of the cells and these are known as corona radiata cells. Clear? Now, inside the corona radiata, 
you will have a, a very important layer which is known as zona pellucida. What is that? Zona pellucida. So, this is your zona pellucida. Now, inside the zona pellucida, you will have a third layer which is known as vitelline membrane. What is that? Vitelline membrane. Vitelline membrane is a another name of the plasma membrane of secondary oocyte. So, from outside to inside, when you are seeing the secondary oocyte, you will find the three layer. This is the outermost layer, which is known as corona radiata. Then this is zona pellucida and this is vitelline membrane. And this is your cytoplasm of oocyte which is known as oplasm and inside this oplasm you will have the nuclear material of the female gamete. So my dear students what will happen when the spermatozoa will approach the secondary oocyte it will first pierces this layer. So the what is the first step of fertilization penetration of corona radiata. Then it will pierce this layer that is the second step that means penetration of zona pellucida. Then there is a third step penetration of vitelline membrane. Then there is a fourth step fusion of male and female nuclear material. Clear? So when you are writing the steps of the fertilization, you have the idea of the three layers of the secondary site, corona radiata, zona pellucida and vitelline membrane. So suppose if I am writing it in exam, so what I will start, there are four steps. One, penetration of outer layer that is corona radiata. Second, penetration of zona pellucida. Third, penetration of vitelline membrane. And the fourth step is fusion of male and female nuclear material. Clear? So these are the four steps of fertilization. So once you will go through the four, these four steps, which I am not uh, detailing here, I am just explaining how to write an exam. There is a one very important thing occurs that as soon as our male gamete contacts with the corona radiata, the acrosomal reaction starts. What starts? Acrosomal reaction. And with the help of this acrosomal reaction, it releases the enzymes and those enzymes will start to penetrate these three layers. Clear? So if acrosomal reaction will not happen, the spermatozoa will not able to pierce any of these three layers. So these three layer penetration is possible just because of the acrosomal reaction which occurs at the head of your spermatozoa. So now what will happen, now what is happening here, as soon as you will see that this is your vitelline membrane after piercing the two layer. That means your, this sperm has pierces already the two layer, this is your corona radiata, this is your zona pellucida and now the sperm has pierced the third layer that is vitelline membrane. Now once the head of the sperm come in contact with the vitelline membrane, what will happen that this plasma membrane of your head fuses with the vitelline membrane. The plasma membrane of the head fuses with this vitelline membrane of oocyte and this membrane on the anterior surface of the head of the spermatozoa already disappears while it is going deep and deep. So we will remove this from here. So if you will remove this, what will happen? Now this is in contact. Now here you will have the female nuclear material. Here we will have the male nuclear material in the head. You know the head contains the nucleus which is covered by the acrosomal cap. So once you will approach here, what is happening that the posterior plasma membrane of the head now fused with this vitelline membrane. Now anterior surface 
a uh, acrosomal cap as well as the plasma membrane has already been disappear. Now what will happen? As soon as this process of the fusion of plasma membrane take place and male material start to go in the female cytoplasm, it produces a kind of calcium wave. And what is the effect of calcium wave? Now there are formation of granules and this calcium wave shift these granules in the outer side and now they are known as cortical granules. Now these cortical granules contain some enzymes. These enzymes will change the property of vitelline membrane and they will harden the vitelline membrane. So what is the first effect of calcium wave? Calcium wave first produces or shift the granules of cytoplasm towards the cortex and these granules releases the enzymes and these enzymes changes the property of vitelline membrane as well as zona pellucida. So that is known as vitelline depolarization and it is also known and it is known as zona reaction. So what are the two things happening here? What is happening? As soon as the plasma membrane of the male gamete fuses with the vitelline membrane, there is a production of calcium wave. And this calcium wave is having multiple effects. One of the effect is that the granules which are present in the cytoplasm now shifted to the periphery, now they are known as cortical granule. And these cortical granule secrete some enzymes. These enzymes will change the property of vitelline membrane as well as the zona pellucida. This is known as vitelline depolarization and zona reaction. So by these two process, the property of vitelline membrane and zona pellucida has been changed so they are now become impermeable, they are now become impermeable for other sperms and it avoid polyspermy, it avoids polyspermy. So this is the one impact of the calcium wave. What is the second effect of the calcium wave? The second effect of the calcium wave is that you know there is a presence of a nuclear material in the female which is still in the arrest of second meiotic division. So this nuclear material completes its second meiotic division and it will form a pure haploid nuclear material and one polar body and this polar body will go in the perivitelline space. So the calcium wave is first creating a kind of granules and these granules are responsible to avoid the polyspermy by changing the property of vitelline membrane and zona pellucida. Second, this calcium wave is responsible to complete the second meiotic division of this oocyte nuclear material and it will produce a definitive haploid secondary oocyte and this definitive haploid number of the nuclei now going to merge with this pronucleus or the male nuclear material. The third effect is that as we know after the formation of the zygote there is a very high speeding divisions or the cleavage is going to take place. So for that there is a metabolic activation occurs, clear? So there are three things in your exam, what are the effects of calcium wave? So the first effect is that it produces the cortical granules and these cortical granules prevent the polyspermy by changing the property of vitelline membrane and zona pellucida. Second effect is that it is able to initiate the arrested second meiotic division of female nuclei to complete the division and so that you will receive a pure haploid definitive oocyte. And the third effect is that this calcium wave is responsible for metabolic 
activation of your OOPLAS. Clear? Now, the next comes is after fertilization, what are the results of fertilization? So, my dear students, when you are talking about the results of first fertilization, the first result is that it is responsible to regain the normal diploid number of the chromosome because the two haploid cells are joining each other to form a diploid cell. So, the number of that species regain. Second, there is a determination of the sex at the level of chromosome. How? If 22X of the female fuse with the 22X of the male, then you will have the female child. But if this egg will join with the 22Y of the sperm, then you will have a male child. Third, the fertilization, process of the fertilization, there is a completion of the second mutic division of your oocyte which has been arrested for a long. And the fourth effect is that there is a metabolic activation occurs in the ooplasm which is which make this oocyte ready for the cleavage. Clear? So, these are the four effects of the fertilization. But my dear students, there is a one very important term and that is known as fusion of the nuclei, which is a fourth step. Now, when we are talking about the fusion of the nuclei, there is a word come is pronucleus, male and female pronucleus. Now, what is this pronucleus? Now, what will happen once the male nuclear material start to enter into the female cytoplasm, it will show the some kind of swollen and this swollen male nuclear material is known as pronucleus. Now, what is female pronucleus? Female pronucleus is formed after completion of second meiotic division where you will have a definitive haploid number of the cells. So, male pronucleus is a swollen nucleus and female pronucleus form after the second meiotic division and once the second meiotic division occurs, you will have haploid number of the nucleus chromosomes in the nuclear material of the female in ooplasm which is labeled as a pronucleus of female. Then, my dear students, there is a very important concept. What will happen in the ooplasm when the haploid number of the male and haploid number of the female pronucleus join each other, there is a process is known as DNA replication occurs. Now, this DNA replication is a compulsory step. Otherwise, what will happen if without replication, this is having 23 chromosome, this is having 23 chromosome and when these 23, 23 chromosome arrange themselves in a center uh, along with the spindles and when there are splitting occurs, what will happen? This is having a cell of 46 and this when the vertical splitting without duplication occurs, again the cells will have 23, 23. So, this duplication or the DNA replication avoid this thing. So, whenever there is a DNA replication occurs, after the mitosis, the cells always will have 46, 46. If this replication will not occur, as soon as the pronuclei are going to mix with each other, as soon as the male and female nuclear material and chromosomes align themselves on the spindles, there has to be a DNA replication. So, when there is a splitting of nuclear material is taking place initially at the first part of the division, there has to be the 46-46 chromosome in both the cells which are deriving by the first cleavage. So, now how to write down in the exam? First, you have to write down about the definition, 
then what is the site of implantation. These are the two steps of the priming, capacitation and acrosomal reaction. Then there are four steps of the fertilization that means penetration of corona radiata, zona pellucida, vitelline membrane and then fusion of the pronuclei. Then what is the effect of the calcium wave? So calcium wave is producing three effect. First is the change in the property of your zona pellucida and vitelline membrane. Then the calcium wave is also responsible to complete the second meiotic division and the last effect is metabolic action. What are the effects of fertilization? And lastly, a flow chart. Now, how to make a flow chart? That you can see here, how to make a flow chart. In this flow chart, I have started the flow chart from the entry of your semen into the female genital tract. So, once you will have the deposition of the spermatozoa inside the female genital tract, there is a reaction occurs. So the next step is the uterine contraction start because of the release of oxytocin and this uterine contraction aspirate the male gametes inside the uterine uh, cavity. And there is a capacitation occurs that means the uh, conditioning of the spermatozoa will undergoes and once the ca capacitation is taking place now the sperm is also having the property of acrosomal reaction. So now it will reach to the ampulla of your fallopian tube as soon as where you will have the initiation of acrosomal reaction and this acrosomal reaction helpful to penetrate all the three barriers and after piercing the three barriers what will happen the head of the sperm uh, plasma membrane merge or fuse with the vitelline membrane and it will stimulate the calcium wave and the calcium wave will change the property of your vitelline membrane as well as zona pellucida to avoid the polyspermy and then there is a fusion of the male and female pronuclei and you will have a formation of diploid zygote clear so my dear students you have to draw this flow chart in your exam whenever you are writing about the fertilization you can draw this one more uh, diagram of your secondary site where you have to draw the three layers one is corona radiata zona pellucida and vitelline membrane and there is a perivitelline space which is having one polar body this one polar body is before fertilization and this is your nuclear material once the fertilization will take place the number of polar body will increase why because the fertilization occurs once uh, there is a second meiotic division completes. So second meiotic division also produces a polar body. So in this perivitelline space, you have more than one polar body, clear? So my dear students, now at the end of this lecture, I hope you have the idea how to write down the fertilization in exam. You have to start with your definition. Then you have, you should not for, forget to write some very important word in your short note like capacitation, like acrosomal reaction, like the steps of fertilization, what is the calcium wave, what are the effect of calcium wave and I am suggesting you that always draw the flow chart in your exam step by step showing the fertilization. So this is all for the lecture, thank you.